we we okay, we got start. DOT to come in to fix our um blue okay. them. Uh good code. evening you guys. We are meeting for the HRC meeting. Um today is September nineteenth and we are calling the meeting to order at six oh five. Before we get into roll call, um well, I'll do roll call first. Um Mark Rasdorf. Present. Carl Wilson. Present. LaChauncey Staten. Here. Juan Garcia. Bayong Lee. Here. Andrew Shu. Here. Mary Perkins Williams. Here. Chantel Hawkins. Carlson Dawson. Here. Luther Hemby. Mary Moy. Here. Veronica Robertson. And Sharon Rochelle. Uh, next, can we have a motion to excuse Sharon Rochelle due to health issues? I'll make that motion. I right. second. And can we have a vote by a show of hands? Next would be the approval of August 15th minutes. Do we have a motion to approve those minutes? I so, so move. I second. And can we have a vote by a show of hands? <clears throat> Next would be public comment. We do not have anyone um, signed up for public comment at this time. <clears throat> The October 17th meeting will be held at the Eugene James Auditorium as well. We do have a guest speaker, um, John Moore. Um, he'll be speaking about financial literacy and just give us some tips um, that the community can use. <clears throat> Next, we have old business. Um, we do have to discuss the listening sessions. Um, have you all gotten your locations yet for the listening sessions? If so, you guys can. Um, tell me now. No, when 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 am I supposed to do one? Um, we can put it on the agenda to have them for next meeting. Um, the locations for no, each I think, I think each area. Okay. Um, do we have any updates from the subcommittees? The chair. No, no, no updates, ma'am. <laughs> okay, um, next we have our guest speaker, Misty Chase from PATS. She is the director of Pitt Area Transit and she comes to Pitt County with 20 years of experience with local government and 11 years of experience in public transportation. Thank you for having me tonight. Oh, thank you for Welcome. being here. Welcome. I'm very excited to be in Pitt County. Um, as Veronica said, I was just said that. I do have 20 years in local government experience, um, 11 years of that being in public transit in Greene County, which is a, an adjoining county, much smaller than what Pitt County is, but for sure it gave me the base that I needed to come to Pitt County and do the things that I needed to do. And I came in June, and I have hit the road running. There's a lot <laughs> going on in public transit. I don't want Florida to give any back feedback here. <laughs> <laughs> so, first of all, I want to share that I'm a real community person and I like to partner with lots of agencies because we know that if we all hold hands and work together how much more we can accomplish than we can if we try to take that walk by ourselves. Um, so I like to be involved in what's happening in the community and I like to be a positive role for the agency, not just myself, but the agency that I represent. So, as I have sit back and observed things that have happened in public transit and how we can be better partners in this community, one of the things that I do need to do is I need to do some outreach in some of the adjoining cities like Bethel, Simpson, Farmville, Winterville, Aiden. Make those people know who I am so that when public transit comes up, that they think about me. Not that I really want them to think about me, but think about me and what I represent. Mm -hmm. um, we are trying to do some outreach in those areas. We're trying to get our routes more efficient so that we can serve more of the citizens because we want to serve every Pitt County system. citizen. We are open to the public, so there is no discrimination when it comes to public transit, and we want to make sure that we meet those needs. Um, as I train staff, we all have those discussions. We know that some people have limited mobility, we know that some have limited 
health reasons that would keep them from just being that passenger that can walk on that van. So even though our policy says curb to curb, we offer those assistance. If you've got somebody that's struggling to get on that van, don't just stand there and look at them. You make sure that you help them on there. Um, so I just want you to know that I'm here to serve the people of Pitt County. I'm open for any suggestions, any ideas that you have for us to help make public transit in Pitt County better. We want to do that. The first week I was here, and I think about you with the Sheriff's Department, because um, I had a great working relationship with the Sheriff's Department where it came from. And they called and said that they had someone in a wheelchair that needed to get, they were serving papers on him and he had to be arrested. And could we help him out? And they all looked at me like, can we do that? And I said, absolutely we can do that. So, you know, you have to use some common sense. You have to make good judgment calls, and that's what we're there to do. Um, not that I can have my finger on everything that happens in that agency, but I'm trying to make sure that I'm within reach of it, if that makes any sense. I'm just a good old down-to-earth person. Um, we can tell. You can tell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's and beautiful. I will tell you, I have a very strong passion for what I do. That's beautiful. Um, yes, ma'am. It's nice to hear that comment. I am very passionate about what I do, and I'm trying to make my employees have the same the passion mm -hmm. that I have. Um, we want, when someone rides pit area transit, we want them to have a great experience, not just an okay experience. And that's what we're working on. Um, I have some brochures that I want to share with each of you. Um, take them home, take them to your church, take them to your neighborhoods. If any of you are involved in other organizations that you would like for me to come and speak to, I am more than open to do that. I'm going to give you a business card. I'm just a phone call away, an email away. I have a very open door policy because, like I said, with all of us working together, and when I say all of us, I'm talking about all of Pitt County, we can accomplish so much more and make it <coughs> such a wonderful place to live, work, and play. Um, I'm open to any questions I told. Jessica, that I won't go come with a PowerPoint because I wanted to answer the questions that you wanted answered. I didn't need to just get up here and talk for 30 minutes and then you say, well, she didn't tell us about so-and-so. So I am open for questions. I'm ready. Ma'am, you I'm ready? ready? Okay, let's go. <laughs> um, the first one off the bat, um, in the rural areas, um, will there be any routes or will there be any um, set places or will you be able to do any of that? Okay. So we are set up as a demand route system, which means that we do not do a fixed route. So like the city of Greenville, their buses, they stop at a particular bus stop. We are demand, so we go to their homes. Um, we are trying to serve the rural parts of Pitt County more. And all the people have to do is to call us and schedule that they need a pickup and we'll go to their homes to pick them up. Uh, how much is your service? Nine dollars for an RGP route. What's that? That means that's a one-way trip. So we go to Bethel and pick somebody up and bring them to say bye to PCU help you. It's nine dollars. So y you will schedule if, if I need to get to... Oh my God. I'm so sorry, you all. Lord have mercy. <laughs> um, when you schedule, uh, you will, we, you will, it, you will. If I call you, I should know that I need to be at my doctor's office at what blank time. Yes, Do you tell the person then what time you can be there? And you are within what? Okay, so we take appointments every day from 9 o'clock to 2 o'clock. So if you need a ride on Friday, mm -hmm. you need to call us on Thursday by 2 o'clock. Okay, you give, you give a, us the date and time of your appointment, mm -hmm. the address of the appointment, and what time your appointment time was. Mm -hmm. We aim to drop you off 15 minutes prior to your appointment time. And so then we do the schedule after 2 o'clock the day before, and you get a call telling you what time your pickup time is. And if you have a, an appointment, what we like to do, if you don't know exactly what time you will be ready, we schedule the pickup as being a wheel call. When you finish at the doctor, you call our office and we schedule a van to go back and pick you up. 
it sounds too great. No way, no, just time for you to get there. And you can give me an estimate what time you will get to where I have a bus come. And up. I can look, if you call, sometimes I can look and see exactly where that van's at. We are actually looking at some more technology so that our passengers can look and do that. But that's a little bit it's down out the road. There. It's out there. It's out there. Okay, the next, the next. <clears throat> um, Hispanic. Do you have an interpreter uh, in your office? We actually have a couple of drivers that can that help us with that. With and our brochures are both in Spanish okay. and English. Okay. And we have access to an interpreter at all times. I always like I hope to it's think. Not me that has to do it. I always <laughs> like to um, think of the the maybe that may happen. And we do. Because there are, are a <clears throat> lot of people who um, do not drive. That's and they may live in the rural area. And there is a forecast that Hurricane Lee, thank God she's gone, uh, may hit this area and you need to get to shelter right away because there are a lot of mobile homes out there. Do you have something in place for that? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And we are a part of the emergency plan for Pitt County. Wonderful. So when that, de when you're declared a disaster, and we know that it's happening, those charges are waived. We go pick those people up, and they don't have to have nine dollars to ride the van. No, no, no cost for that That's service. It. So Thank now you. let me tell you a little bit about the cost too. That's just for our RGP riders. We also contract with several of the insurance companies that pay fees if it's a medical appointment. So like if somebody has Medicare and they have a supplement, which I think now they call it Part B and there's another Part C, a lot of those insurance companies will pay for so many trips to a doctor's appointments. So we have an intake form. And when you call into our office, our dispatchers take the information. They do not put it in the computer. Myself or one other staff member calls that person back and ask them questions and gets the best way that we possibly can work with them. So we ask them those questions. Do you have a supplement? Do you have, if you have Medicaid? There's always things that we try to work with them because we don't want them to have to pay that $9 if they qualify for something else. Um, there was a, a person in the rural area who lived down the highway through a part uh, subdivision, through a mobile home, and there was a path, and there may have been a mud hole, I don't know. But the uh, transportation driver refused to go to the house and pick him up, and he um, was handicapped, really. And that, com I, I have an office out, and that complaint came to me. Um, and I said, well, why don't you try them again and give them a chance? Not everyone understands. So I don't know whether that issue was ever solved, but how would you address it is my question. Because we are being aired, and I would like very much for the handicapped, the handicapped people to know that the service is available to them under undue circumstances. Right. And I would make every effort that we possibly could to go and get them. Now you all know that you can't have a rule for every sort of Correct, situation. correct. Um, but I would go out personally and inspect the, the, situation. the route into that home for us to try to make an alternative plan to make sure that we could transport that particular I don't want person. to do all of the, compl the question and answers. I'm going to finish after this one. Do you have a way of... Uh, uh, receiving concerns from c citizens and residents about services that they need we are so actually, that you can get it in advance. Okay, we're actually getting ready to do a survey mm -hmm. and on that survey that's one of the questions that I have is for how would people like to be able to contact us with some type of concern. It could be a compliment. We hope that it's more compliments than yes. it is concern. Yes. Um, we know we live in a world where people always can get on social media and, and, and all. So we are working on that now. 
that was one of the things that I addressed after I got here that I felt like we needed to do because I needed to find out what the public wanted from us and what they thought of us. Like I said, I wanted it to be a great experience. I don't want it just to be an okay, and we got to ride that Kid Area Transit van again. I want them to feel good about riding it. So your compliment slash concerns will be on your form? Yes, ma'am. That would be wonderful. And that's something I've actually worked on, too, where that there could be, because some people don't want to tell you who they are, and I get that. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to figure out if we can create something that people could actually share concerns in a different way. And I have a suggestion. Okay. If there is a concern, and I didn't want the driver or the staff to know that I was complaining because they may take re, what you call it, repercussion. Yes, um, on that, there can be a um, administrative call made. There should be a place on the phone as a phone number to call when you need direct. Uh, and that's why I give out my business cards okay. because that number that's on there comes straight to my desk. It does not go to dispatch. Not that you asking for it, but there is there are some of those people. That's right. Thank you very much. I appreciate it, thank and welcome. You. Thank you for coming tonight. I appreciate that. Yes, sir, Mr. Dawson. And I was just looking to make sure I had your name correct, Miss Misty. Welcome again. Thank you. And it's nice to see you. I, um, I'm one of those guys out there in the country that's out there cutting grass at elderly homes and whatnot. And I see your van come out there and I see the guy get out just as you describe. And there's a relative of mine that pushes up on the, takes the ramp out and pushes him up there and he locks it. I didn't know all this stuff took place. They locked the, um, the wheelchair down and um, waves his hand. Those lights are beat the back up, you know, horn is a beeping and stuff. And I was like, this is all. And now to, you know, hear you tell the story about what you guys do, I just want, I want to give a compliment. Very good job. Thank you. I've seen it firsthand. I have not, so and, that's um, nice to hear. I've seen that at firsthand. And, uh, and, the, and the folks look, very, your um, employees, your staff look very professional, very they seem to be very nice, and I'm just on the lawn, we're just watching everything. So, so they want to say thank, thank you for the good job that you're that, that, that you're well, doing, you. and that um, a lot of times your employees um, they represent or they take on the um, supervisor's personality um, in the way that they do stuff. So that means a lot. Um, I do want to ask. Um, so, as a um, is this for like for senior citizens or is it from? Because I just gave a person a ride to work today on my way to the meeting, um, a young lady, a neighbor. And um, of course, you know, I know they would have to call it ahead of time. They, they, ride had, they missed their ride, and I gave them. So, how does it work as far as is it just is it elderly or general citizens? It's general citizens. Um, if you are under the age of 16, you have to have a parent or a guardian or an escort with you. Um, but if you're over 16. Is your mic. Um, yeah, I want you to talk away from so the public I moved can away. Hear. So if you're under the age of 16, you have to have a parent, a guardian, or an escort with you. If you're over the age of 16, then we can pick you up because we have a lot of people that are on their own after the age of 16. What's your time? My time starts and begins in. What time do we start operating? Mm -hmm. um, we have people at dialysis at 4:30 in the morning. And we usually try to get the vans off the road by 6 at night. Okay, try to get them off the road at 6 at night. Yes, ma'am. Um, I do have a question. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Sorry. Um, so this is like a very specific case. There is a student. is like 22 years old. He's under, um, I think he's got autism. I'm not sure. Okay. But um, he, he, al he always struggles to get to Pitt Community College and go back because uh, his mom works. And uh, he has to wait until his mom gets off work so he can pick him up. Is that, can he call you guys? And yes, and actually we have a program with Pitt Community College for those types of students. They have a fund that they will actually pay for. Oh, really? When yes. I give you my card, um, you can reach out to me or give me your name and number, and I will give you a lot so that we can get make sure that we get him in the system. 
Okay, because he he lives in um, like towards the south, like yeah. towards Aden. Right. So we do. We have a partnership with Pitt Community College oh, that's for great. students there that have disabilities, and we we have some that we take to Pitt Community, and then we also take some of them to the Autism Society. They have some type of facility that we take them to. Oh, that's great. Mm -hmm. What is usually their wait time when they call the uh, vehicle is arriving, usually wait time? We have a policy that we need to have them picked up within an hour after they call and they're ready at a doctor's office. I see, I see. And what we try to do is to coordinate that with a van that may be going in the area that they need to go. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. About how many vans do you have on the road? We have 20 vans. Um, I have four in the shop that we can't get parts for. So we have 16 actually on the road right now. And vans are your primary use? Vehicle that is all you? we use is vans. vans. Mm -hmm. And getting parts for some of the these vans are getting to be a problem. A problem. Is it usually many people riding together or just usually just the one or two individuals? It depends, mm -hmm. like the vans that go to COA um, to the Council of Aging. Those vans are usually full. Sometimes your doctor's appointments, maybe two, three, four, five on the van. It just depends on the area that we're coming from. Um, but the COA vans are usually full because we have quite a large number of people that actually go to that facility. Miss Miss, I have to say this. I was just sitting here. It's just the actual person or the citizen, I've noticed this because this is a relative, an elderly relative, it does something to my cousin when she sees that van. She has a glow. She, 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 she knows the driver. Um, he comes, you know, the same driver that comes and picks her up and it's, it's you know, that that's the part that folks, yeah. They do. and. The drivers, the drivers will come to me on numerous occasions and share things about the passengers, their concerns, if they think something's going on in the home. Um, they do. They really That's care about. They care about. Oh, yeah. Well, my mom usually picks her up, and you know, takes her about sometimes. But sometimes she'll come and she'll you know, the van picks her up for Dallas, as you spoke of. It. And it's just, that's the biggest thing of her day. And, that, that, that's, that, I mean, sometimes and sometimes that's our drive. drivers are the only people that see some of these passengers. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, nobody checks on them. So yeah. the drivers kind of know their routines. And, like, if we have one that they go to pick them up in the mornings and they don't come out of the house, I mean, they're calling. Can you call and see what you can find out? And several occasions we've had to call the rescue squad. Um, to come because we couldn't get in the house, they didn't answer, and then we had couldn't one that had fallen. Couldn't get out of them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then when they go to the houses, they're sitting there all day in that atmosphere, so mm -hmm. something that builds them up, I'm, I'm just applaud. I, you know, I just want to applaud you again for a great job. Well, and that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get to know the passengers a lot better because we do want to know their mm -hmm. routines. We want to know when things are out of the ordinary, whether they're being abused at home, whatever the case may be. Um, so we are trying to do that. And one of the things that I found when I got there was that we didn't have dates of birth on a lot of our passengers. They just weren't in the system because you didn't really have to ask it. But I've asked them as they're updating the files to do that. My goal is that when we, especially our elderly people, when we know that's their birthday, even if we just give them a birthday card from our staff, we want them to feel personal. important and make this personable. We sure do. So. I have some really good long-range plans and goals. So, yes, um, another question: um, Do you have, uh, or do you keep a record of like demographics, like how, uh, how, um, what percentage of Hispanics? We uh, do. Oh, really? We, okay. do. we do. And um, how do you guys advertise? Or because I this is new. I I've seen the bands, but I this is new. Like yes. to me, like how do we get? I'll pass those out for you if you want me to. Well, I don't know what was done before I came here. Well, who cares? You're getting it. Well, that's, <laughs> and that's what I'm trying to do. I'm doing a lot of outreach. Um, when Pitt Community College was having orientation, I went out and visited with students. Um, here, I'll give you some more because I want y'all to take these with you. I don't need to take them out with me. I have some more. Um, <laughs> 
So I'm actually trying to look at some community events and things that are going on, and I'm, I'm encouraging you, if you know of something that I need to participate in or to have a table, um, I, would love, I would love for you to let me know because I, I do, I want to get to know more of the community. So I think Jessica can um, forward you some of the events that are happening. Definitely. And then I'll share them with you. Okay. We just, we just had the Latino Festival on the weekend, and uh, it would have been yeah. um, a good exposure. So. Put me down for next year and let me know when it is so I can uh, sure follow will. my calendar. <clears throat> yeah. Is it Monday through Friday only? Or? We run Monday through Saturday. Saturday. We, just do, we do not operate on Sunday. Okay. Saturday until what time? Six o'clock? Mm -hmm. okay. And we also um, do the paratransit for the city of Greenville. So when they have people that cannot get to a bus stop, they qualify them and send that to us, and then we perform those trips for them and then build them for those trips. Yes, sir. Um, we have a lot of um, vehicles that need services. Um, sometimes they don't have transportation to either the Bidman Advocates or to the Center of Family Violence or the court to hear their trial. Is that something that they can reach out to y'all to get them, to try get them there? And okay. we do have some that we're already doing that for. We okay. actually had a couple today that we had to take downtown. Okay. No problem. So, yes. Okay, no, no, okay they have a whole lot in there. Thank you. Well, it sounds like you're doing a great job. Well, um, I hope that I can come back next year and tell you all the things that we've accomplished in the, the next year. I sit back the first few weeks and just tried to observe, and now I'm on go mode. <laughs> so I would offer uh, the interfaith clergy for Grateful and surrounding areas does a uh, network community meeting, and they do a luncheon. It's actually this Thursday, so I know it's late notice and it's probably not going to work out, but uh, Pastor Rodney Coles is one of the facilitators of that group. Okay. That would get you the largest audience of the interfaith network so that would put you in front of a bunch of not only churches but nonprofit leaders and everything in between so that would be an opportunity for you to come you know okay. and get a large audience of people because especially when you have at that interfaith clergy meeting when you have clergy from all over Pitt County and surrounding areas then it gives you an opportunity to network with them and maybe even go to some of these churches that are in rural environments right. and so forth and so on. That's right. And just like what it, uh, Juan said, it is uh, uh, like Latino families you know, or even like Asian people, we really never thought about it uh, to using public transportation. Mm -hmm. So we never really search for it. So if we, we knew it now, something can able to reach out for help, especially especially elderly, especially elderly. Sometimes they need to go to this hospital. They call for the Uber, sometimes they call for the friends. And, and I realized that I think this would be great tool, great uh, transportation can be able to use it, yes. And just let me make this clear too, it's not just for medical appointments. We can mm. take them to the bank, we can take them to the beauty shop, mm. get a haircut, we can take them to get their nails done, we can take them to the grocery did, did, store. Did you put that on the microphone? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> because that's... We do. Um, more people have a problem getting to the bank. They do, and you know, a lot of people charge elderly people when they live out in the outer parts of the county to come to town to do something. Mm -hmm. And so we want to try to help them prevent from doing that. We know that most of them are on fixed incomes. But we, I just want you to know, we serve the entire population. We don't ask you how much money you got in the bank or anything like that. We're there to serve you. So. I love that when they come to town. You don't hear that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Even tell I'm from Eastern I, I, North Carolina. I love it. I love it. Yeah, yeah. I do know that there are a lot of Hispanic people who miss a lot of this thing the service that Pitt County offer in the Pactolis area, uh, since that's, that's, that's my side of the creek, please um, find some way of getting this out to them so that they know that their tax dollars work in Pitt County. I know the school and there's some extras on the table. Take them home with you. Has, has been having issues with keeping drivers. Are you, um, do you have any issues with that? We do. We do. I, know it takes a I think when COVID hit, um, people took a different look mm -hmm. at what they have to do. 
Um, but we're working on that. Um, we use a lot of retired people, and we use a lot of part-time drivers. Um, but I think that will be, and that's a statewide problem. Um, I serve on the North Carolina Public Transit Authority Board, and I hear directors all over this state talking about the problem with, with drivers. Are there certain criteria for your drivers? None of my vans require CDL license, so you can just have a regular driver's license. I mean, you have to have a clean driving record, and you have to have had five years of driving experience. Um, so it's not too strenuous, um, but we do have cameras on our vans, and so we can see what's happening on the vans, and so if someone calls and gives us a complaint about an incident that happened, I can go back and look at, at what happened and see exactly. Um, I, have a question. I have a question for you. Is, um, with the drivers, do you have any special type training for the drivers to how to handle the patients? We do in-house training. In fact, actually, all day tomorrow, I do three different training sessions, safety training with our drivers. We start at 8.30 tomorrow morning, 8.30, 11.30, and 2.30. Okay. We have to break it down because they have, we have so many different shifts for all of them to get it in. And because we do receive funding from North Carolina Department of Transportation, we do have certain criteria of training that each driver has to meet annually. Okay. But we exceed that. Ms. Chase. Yes, ma'am. Before you sit down tonight, I would like for you to introduce yourself clearly by name, give your telephone number, how the general public can reach you. This is one of the reasons um, we are in this auditorium tonight so that our residents can know the services that we have. This is a re human resource and we want people to be able to go back and say, because I think these run rotatively I do. make sure you give the number to call and when you have operational service and if they have special needs that they need to say so when they come thank you any other questions before I do that just do you struggle to uh, find funding for your or that's it's well funded um, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Well, I'm constantly looking to see what is out there. Okay. This is grant season for us, so um, I'm in the process of writing two grants um, to operate with and one for capital that has to be to DOT by the first portion of October. So, but I continually do that, and that's one of the reasons that I'm looking at partnerships is because if we can partner with other agencies, sometimes you can tag it along is. on additional funds. Yes. I want us to be very self-sufficient. Okay. Um, I get, a, as a member of the National Association of Counties, mm -hmm. I get a lot of information from the various um, uh, departments or units out of the federal government. And I can, it, I don't know whether you get whatever you get, but, I usually just forward it, and I want to know if your yeah, it's on this car. So I will forward things. Okay. It doesn't mean anything, but just, just in case you want to see it. And in North Carolina, sometimes FTA monies, which is the federal transit, um, comes through the state. So we apply to the state because the state applies to the feds. So, mm -hmm. But I do. I'm continually looking at ways that we can generate additional revenue. And that's one of the things I'm looking at with our structure now is how to be more efficient. Um, gas prices continue to escalate, and we spend a lot of money on gas. So if we can do some things to make those trips more efficient and cut back on the gas bills, that gives us more money to use for operating. Maybe electric vehicles somewhere down the road. Maybe one and that's something that I have looked at with DOT. Um, there are some things that are coming in the next fiscal year that we may have to take a different look at to see. Um, it's not just purchasing the vans, but we got to look at the infrastructure part for that also. You say, so y'all take trips out of county? Take we do not. Y'all do not? Okay. We do not. Okay. Um, and that's been, that was in place when I got here. Mm -hmm. um, as long as we're struggling with the number of vans and the number of trips that we need to do here in the county, I can't foresee us doing that right now, but that may be something down the road. If, we, can, if we could do an expansion to our fleet. Yeah. I'm 
I don't know if it's already been asked mm -hmm. because when you're late, you don't know what went on before you got here. <laughs> so, but um, how can municipalities help? What is it that we could do? Um, you know, we got our towns, and of course, I, I can't obligate funds, but I know that we do in Winterville, we do um, some things. Uh, some things with nonprofits during our, during our um, season for funding. I think at the biggest point but, that I would like to be able to either share brochures with your town hall so when people come in to either pay their taxes or their water bills or whatever, that it would be readily available for, for people to see and to pick up and take home with them. Um, if you have some type of newsletter that you send out from the town, whether it be by email or by snail mail, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> we would like to put some information in there with our information of how to contact us and what our services do. Um, I think right now that would be the biggest thing okay. because I'm just trying to reach so many people and let them know what we do. I don't want anybody not to know what PATS does for Pitt County. Um, I want to, to, my email gets large sometimes, but I want you to know that I have quite a, um, lot of contacts because the area is more than 233 square miles north of the Tar River. If you would email me something okay. to get to the residents, I can uh, send it and say, please share with your areas. And I have uh, contact information with most of the pastors in my district. Okay. And I can do that okay. because Thank they you. are way out. Thank you. And I would also be willing to come to a town meeting if you would like for me to come and share information or if your town has some type of event that we could participate with. We would love to do that. Ms. Nancy, I was looking at the brochure and looking at the fair. We were kind of looking at that. And I see where you don't accept a credit card or debit card. And that's where we're trying to get. I'm trying to get you know, my mom and my elderly aunts and uncles. and. So we just had a call last week because in Pitt County, Pitt Area Transit just can't start accepting credit cards. There's a process we have to go through. <laughs> and we are working on that. MIS is involved in that um, because right now my drivers collect cash. Mm. I also so, serve on the State Employee Credit Union Board, Advisory Board, so if um, there's something that the banks can actually do that if there's some kind of grants that, that, that are possible and I can also, you know. Well, at this point, it's in the hands of my MIS department here for Pitt County. Um, they're actually looking at doing it for several agencies. Um, we accept checks, um, which a lot of our early people do write checks. Um, so what, was this policy mirrored in Greene County? Which policy? The check, cash or check only? Um, in Greene County, I didn't charge any passengers to ride. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. I had that department so efficient that we could operate without my passengers having to pay because I, wow. it was a small community and we could do that. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm going to find out. Well, congratulations. Yeah, give me a few years. Give me a few years and we're going to make some improvements. Not that it was bad, but we're going to, anything can be better. Yeah, so of course. the person called in ahead of time and they, I guess they could pay. They could pay they right now, we can't even do that uh, with credit cards. Wow. Mm -hmm. Well, I understand it's slow. Uh, if they have a credit union, they can go to the bank ahead of time and have a check drawn up for for nine, two of them drawn Mary, up. Who's going to take them to yeah, the bank? We'll take them to the bank. We'll take them to the bank. We'll take them to the bank. We'll take them to the bank and have it drawn up. But we do that. We do that. And you can hey, hold that check call for me. Two, two, month, two, two months. It can't be over 60 days. That's a good check. Florida, how? Yeah. we got to fix this. We're working on it. It's the 21st yeah. century. I've only been here since the end of the No, I'm not Come criticizing on, you. I'm just saying that. <laughs> Should have been done already. This, We're working on it. We're working possible. to be the best in the East U.S. If, just if give us a little time. come up with some ways to advertise, mm -hmm. churches will donate and help fund and create mm -hmm. 
funding opportunities because uh, especially with what you're talking about with in, in rural communities being able to help with transportation back and forth not only to you know the bank groceries and mm -hmm. this if churches know about it the faith community will donate I mean we all know this I mean right. that that would be one of the very we could put that especially as budget season is approaching for those of us in the faith community we would include something like that in our budget. Ms. Chase, what's the blunt of your costs for everything? As far as is it more the keeping the bands on the road, paying your staff? What is the blunt of the income for as far as the cost of operating costs? Operating costs right. of the drivers, the fuel, and the vehicle maintenance lumped together is is. I mean, just for an example. I used twenty thousand dollars worth of gas last month. Okay. Mm -hmm. The tires, the wear and tear, the oil changes. You would think that these um, companies do give you a time to trial certain GPS systems. You don't have to buy. We, we have GPS on our vans, and so I can look and tell where vans at at any right, time. Right, you can try mm -hmm. in that. And you can have a way of getting the best just by trying. But it's a lot of work for you. Sorry. Thank you. <coughs> Thank y'all for having me. Yes. But I'm going to do I have a question for okay. you. Uh, speaking of, it was talking about the cost. Well, what type of coverage does Pat Van have for, um, say, if one of the drivers had an accident or something, how does that cover the, the, the riders or whatever? We are covered under Pitt County's insurance policy. I think is two million dollars. I think it's. Two. We don't know. But <laughs> it's, it's, it's they are, but they are covered. And it meets all the criteria that the North Carolina Department of Transportation and the FTA says that we have to have okay. for the bank. We're hoping that, that nothing happens and stuff, but. I was but it's just, it's covered. Okay. Well, the week I got here, I came to work on Monday morning. On Wednesday morning. I had a van that was involved in a wreck. Mm -hmm. A car sent across the center line and hit. That van's still in the shop. Mm -hmm. We can't get parts to get it fixed. Mm -hmm. So it does happen. But we just try to teach them to be as safe and be have the most defensive driving skills that they can possibly have. Um, you are required to wear a seat belt. Okay. And we do strap down wheelchairs. So. Yep. We practice all the safety that we can do, but you all know that sometimes it's out of your control. Yes, Mr. Chris Barnes, who's the risk manager for Pitt County, he and I have become really good friends because I had lots of questions and we've had lots of things that I wanted to make clear. So he keeps an eye on all of that and manages all of our claims and insurance policies. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. I need to I need to say who I am and how to get up with you. Yes. I'm Misty Chase, the director of Pitt Area Transit. My direct phone number to my desk is 252-902-2010. Speak a little slow with that. 252-902-2010. To dispatch, it's 902-2002. My email is misty.chase at pittcountync.gov. And stop by my office and we can chat a lot more about things that I can do for your particular situation or your particular community. And thank you for having me and I look forward to coming back and giving you some updates. And I also look forward to you to invite me to some of the other organizations that you all are involved in. Thank you for thank your time. You so much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Um, do we have any more questions or comments regarding HRC business? Are you guys um, clear about the listening sessions, the locations? Yes? No? Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, the expectation there is that each one of us is going to come back mm -hmm. with a location that we might go out and meet people. Yes. Mm -hmm. Then we're going to cover the county. Yes, that's the plan with everybody's respective um, areas that you serve. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what now? The area you serve. Wait just a minute. I, did, I, I missed that. You said 
You, we are to go out. No, no. Just a suggestion. Yeah. For, this came out of the um, longer talk about. Yeah, about having like a listening session, just get the community involved. So each person in their respective areas are, is supposed to find a location that we can meet at and then um, invite the community and meet back and report back in October. At our October okay. meeting. So Mary, ideally you're just coming with some suggestions mm -hmm. of one or two locations in Pactolis where we could set a, a, a meeting mm -hmm. where HRC is going to go out and we're going to go to the people right. and hear from them as opposed to us guessing what's on the minds of people. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Good. Good. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Call Bethel. Winterville's ready. You ready. <laughs> <laughs> I already got it approved by town. Okay. So we got one already approved, and Miss Moy already has hers approved, and yeah. Okay, we got three places already, so I'm way behind. There we go. I'll get it. 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 I'll um, if you all, it's going to be September 28th at 8.30 a.m. at the Hilton. So if you guys want to attend, please let me know by Friday so I can um, RSVP us. Um, in honor of Her uh, Hispanic Heritage Month, Heritage Month, Optimum and Television, Television Univision um, is hosting a contest, ASA contest for middle and high school students. And I'll send um, out more information about that via email. The National um, Coalition Against Racism and the North of the River Association will be hosting a candidate listening session September 23rd at 11 p.m. at uh, Philippi. And this will be, um, if you need a ride, there is a phone number, 252-327-1818. Um, and then a Mexican will be hosting a conversation with the Eastern NC Mayor September 22nd from 12 p.m. to 2 p.m at Pitt, Pitt Community College at the Eddie and Joe um, Allison Smith Center in Winterville. And also the Center for Family Violence is hosting a domestic violence um, luncheon October 3rd, um, 11 to 1 at the Convention Center. Do we have any more um, community announcements? Yeah, I would like to make one. Um, I'm on the board of the Greenville Museum of Art and I want to invite all of you and whoever hears this <laughs> to the opening reception for a new exhibit at the museum um, it will be on Friday, October 6th from 5 to 8. It's free and open to the public. The exhibit is called Marauders, and it's a three-person ex exhibition. I'm going to read this to make sure I get it right. A three-person exhibition featuring original art by Antoine Williams, Dante K. Hayes, <coughs> and Johannes Barfield through a range of media, including ceramics, audiovisual audio -visual installations, wheat paste murals, and collages, along with historical African artworks and artifacts from East Carolina University's Gray Gallery, Marauders explores themes of history, memory, ancestry, and futurism. Okay. So all three of those artists are African American men. Two of them are originally from North Carolina. Um, so it's a new exhibition, and you're all invited. I hope you will be there. I have one. Um, it's a documentary screening uh, for human traffic in North Carolina, and that's going to be September 21st from 7 to 9 at uh, Pitt Community College at the Eddie and Joe Allison Smith Center um, for student advancement. It's room 108. And could you both send me that via email, please? Okay, thank you. Do we have any more? Yes. I have three. Okay. The uh, Pitt County African American Caucus will be having a meeting at 4 p.m. Uh, on the 18th. October. October 8th. Uh, September 18th. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I mean, well, October, I'm sorry. I wrote it down, but I don't have a count. So, but it's the African American Caucus will be hosting at Carver Library. On October the 7th, uh, I'm delighted to say that we are uh, on uh, Old River Road are coming together 
to do some positive things for the community. So on October the 7th, we will be having a hot dog um, introduction to moving Old River Road forward. The community has been very good in picking up trash. And if you've been out there, it is much cleaner than it's been. And the residents are proud to say that they love the place that they'll call home. And I'm excited about what uh, is being planned for them. The truck drivers that's in the area will be um, um, advertising that hot dog moving the uh, community forward on Old River Road. And on October the 28th, uh, we've been invited to the Teal's Farm, which is about the middle of the Old River Road, for a River Road Festival. Horses, and I won't say cows, but I start saying goats. <laughs> but we will be having a hayride and a festival. We want to start some positive things for the community to do and uh, have something delightful to participate in. And, and we were invited to the Teal's uh, Farm. And the date set is October the 28th. That should be yes, exciting. Times. Mm -hmm. yeah. These are all on Saturdays. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the hot dog thing starts at 10. But, you know, because it's a good time for hot dogs. You just come out and get a hot dog from 10 to 2. And then on the 28th at the Teal's Farm, uh, uh, I'm not much of a getting up early person, but they like to start at 9. And, and they like to give people a chance to, to get around and ride the horses. Only two will be able to ride at a time because a lot of people uh, don't know how to ride a horse. And then we will have the hay ride, which is a big trailer that you can ride around on. And we're hoping that the more people in the community will come forward. This is a newly planned thing that residents on the Old River Road is going to do. And I'm hoping that we can go further in other. It's just that I'm concentrating. I first started out concentrating on Bethel. So now we're going to invite Bethel to come forward uh, and help with the Old River Road because Bethel is moving forward. They're doing some good things. And the mayor is very proud. And I'm excited that it's moving forward as well. So if you haven't been to Bethel, I'm sure you would know that they've had some things. They had four um uh gardens where the community tended planted tea and worked and ate out of it so um there was some on old river road as well at the teals farm so we are coming together as a community to embrace each other out of friendship and love and, and neighborly harmony you tell Harry, Till, and Moses, I'll be there if they, they have those race cars. I want to ride a horse. I want to drive a race car. I want to drive Dirty Harry. You want to ride what horse? I want, I want to drive Dirty Harry. Oh, oh. He's got that race car there. He, he pull it out, and I'll be there at 6 o'clock. I don't know what he's going to pull out, but they are going to do that. And uh, now, That's a beautiful family. And I'm, little I'm, Harry is uh, yeah. key in this. He says, I want something done, Mary. I want something done. So this is what we've come up with. And so we like to invite y'all to come out to, it's the first time starting, and just think about it. We, you know, we want people to come and enjoy fellowship. It, it is a here. free event, right? Mm -hmm. It's a free for I, everybody. He didn't tell me about money was being charged, but <laughs> you know, it costs something to feed the horses. <laughs> you can make a donation when you come. It, I'm sure it'll be a donation. It's not exactly. <clears throat> Thank you. That's it for me. Any more announcements? All right. Can we have a meeting to adjourn? adjourn. I make. <laughs> and can we have a second? I a second. second. Okay. Mm. And can we have a, a vote by show, show of hands? All right. The meeting is adjourned at 7 o'clock. <laughs>